Dear friends and family, I would like to share something with you today. It is with a lot of pain in our heart we see people in India suffer and struggle with this COVID-19 global pandemic without much help. We feel so helpless sometimes when we think about or think of the suffering individuals in different parts of India. Me and my family lived and grew up most part of our life in India before we moved to the United States in 2013 for my studies. COVID-19 has taken the lives of many of my friends in India and people I personally know, especially those who are working among the unreached people groups in a cross-cultural ministry context. I'm going to share with you a few images that will capture the dangerous, incomprehensible, or sad situation in India. People bury the dead in the sand and the wind takes the sand off. The dead body is visible. On the riverbank, over 100 dead bodies found. Using the earth movers to transport the dead bodies. Man rides 16 kilometers with mother's dead body on a bike in South India. Husband carrying his wife's dead body in a bicycle. A drawn image of the cremation ground. Husband and daughter carrying the dead body of his wife or mother for 12 kilometers. Mass cremation room, a hospital struggling with lack of oxygen. People using firewood to burn the dead body. An Indian made ambulance. People are dying due to the lack of oxygen availability when it comes to when in many hospitals in Delhi, the capital. You can imagine the situation when we go to the villages and other less developed areas of India. Many do not get adequate medical help even in emergency situations. With COVID-19 protocols, there is no help available and the family members even struggle to take the dead bodies from the hospital to the burial ground or pay their final rites and pay respect to the dead body of their dear ones. CDC Center for Disease and Control and Prevention uh, categorizes a level four very high alert about India, uh, suggesting travel to India should be avoided at any cost. They say the current situation in India, even fully vaccinated travelers may be at risk for getting and spreading COVID-19 new variants. As of today, most of the international flights are either canceled for months or heavily restricted because over one third of the global cases of COVID-19 are in India right now. India become a new epicenter for COVID-19. When we all complain or worry about our own life in the US and talk about our own struggle and limited support we have received from the state government where I come from in the state of uh, Kerala, uh, the government provided with food kits uh, for a couple of months. As I was talking with my family back home, this is what my parents received as support from the government. Bags of groceries. One of our family friends had COVID-19 and one evening uh, my in-laws received a call from uh, his son asking for help with regard to transporting him with some oxygen supported transportation and take him to a city hospital that has a handful of ventilators which is two hours away. After two or three hours of calling different places, we learned that the lack of availability of both the ventilators and the lack of medical transportation. Tragically, we lost that night a dear friend of ours only at the age of 54. In my conversation with my brother, friends and community members from my local village, we discussed how I can be a support and a help. We learned that providing an ambulance service will be a help to the community greatly, especially to the village and the neighboring villages.
<laughs> when it comes to mission, I want the mission to be self-sustaining, creating long-lasting impact and empowering local leaders. Providing an ambulance managed by the local mission group will be a help and will help take people to the hospital in an oxygen supported vehicle, conduct medical clinic and take the dead body to the burial ground to offer the final rites. It will be a great way to honor the dead ones as well as the living. They could also do medical related missions providing vaccine clinic medical camp especially get ready for the third world which is projected as of india it's only 3.4 percentage of the people of 1.37 or 38 billion people are vaccinated we pray about it and have prepared a proposal and presented it to our church leaders and one of the other churches people who were happy about this wanted to participate in helping people in india when we got a positive response from many people, it was confirmed that this is a God's plan and we have to move forward. We know that uh, we alone by ourselves with our own help, we cannot do this. So we thought we would ask a few of our close friends, families and church members and also reach different people and churches we know uh, who know the situation of India. If you are willing and able and wanted to participate in what God is doing and would like to help us, your help and your contribution will be a great blessing. Towards this project, we are in need of 25,000 US dollars. 24,000 US dollars is the cost of the vehicle, an Indian made ambulance, and $1,000 for the setup cost. And we have reached around $5,000 promised and some received. We can write, you can write a check or make any donations through our online platform, Riverside United Methodist Church, designated to Ambulance Project. This money that you donate is also tax exempted. I believe with this project we can save many lives and we can respond to the immediate needs. This project uh, on the ground will be managed by a mission youth group where I'm also part of the local village, along with my brother Binoy. We, got, we get to see the continuous impact even after so many years. Your contribution will save a life. This is an opportunity for us to respond, for me to give back to my own community. Please come along with me in helping and making this dream a possibility, a reality. A life lived for others is a life worth living. Thank you so very much from the bottom of our heart. Please come along with me to support. May God bless you.